Hello, this is Paul Check, and welcome back to my video blog. Today I thought I'd talk about something I haven't talked about in a while, but talked about it for a long, long time. But it is still very, very relevant, and that is the danger of the crunch abdominal exercise. Today I'd like to highlight why I write about that so much, talked about it so much, and developed all sorts of other much more effective techniques such as using the Swiss ball, which some of you are aware of, but as I point some of these things out, you'll see even with the Swiss ball, many people are actually making the same mistakes on top of the Swiss ball that they did on the floor. So first of all, a little background. You know, I've been working in the field of uh, conditioning, athletes, corrective exercise, holistic health since January 1984, so quite a while now. In 1988, I was hired by the largest orthopedic physical therapy clinic in San Diego at the time with 22 orthopedic physical therapists, athletic trainers, and we had 13 surgeons, our own surgical center. So I got to do a lot of very interesting work with very interesting people. And what happened was they were very challenged by a number of my ideas. I got hired because I was able to rehabilitate the owner of the clinic when none of the therapists or doctors knew what to do after she had four pretty comprehensive knee surgeries. So they knew I knew something because I figured out someone that none of them could figure out. Well, what happened is right away when they started seeing how I was prescribing exercises, they all got in a big tizzy and thought that what I was doing was very dangerous and Lo and behold, I had to say to them, well, if it's so dangerous, then how is it that I have rehabilitated so many of the people at this point that you guys have been unable to rehabilitate? And so that made them pause. Then the senior physical therapist said, Paul, we really need you to help us understand the rationale you use for selecting exercises, how you prescribe them, and all the things that we need to know. Because if it's working for you and you're able to help our toughest clients, then we would benefit from learning from you. So, I then set out to create an objective means and a rationale behind the system that I use, and that was the development of the primal pattern system. But to do it, I began keeping very, very careful records because I saw that in many of the people that were coming to me that were medical failures, the exercise programs they were given were the exact opposite of what they needed based on postural assessments, joint range of motion, structural issues, et cetera, and the diagnosis they had. For example, if you've got a person with a lumbar posterior lateral disc bulge doing crunches and they're not careful, they can make it much worse. So I found I couldn't get all the information I needed with the standard measurement system because there was things I was finding as I was tracking my patients who would come to me with their programs and things that other doctors and therapists had done. And I was also interested in tracking things for my own interest. So I had to develop special calibrated systems in order to gain the knowledge and give them the objective feedback that I did. So I'm gonna bring uh, our HLC instructor, Angie Lustrick in here and she's going to be a beautiful model for me to demonstrate some of the things. So let me just have you turn uh, this way for me. Uh, actually, I'll have you turn this way. So I invented this special caliper, which is called the Czech Forward Head Caliper. It's a calibrated instrument that measures exactly how far forward a person's posture uh, head carriage is relative to ideal. It was studied at Los Angeles Chiropractic College and after just under 3,000 measurements was found to be the most accurate method for measuring forehead carriage of anything other than x-ray. And it is very effective. So what it allows me to do, there's a calibrated scale here. There's a level so I know I'm on the level. And there's a special indicator that tells me when I've pushed it in exactly the right point to take the measurement so everyone's measurements are consistent. What this allowed me to do was determine how far forward is a person's head carriage relative to ideal. And so using this calibrated instrument, I can check these things. Angie's got two centimeters of forward head carriage. Normal is zero to three centimeters. 
based on many thousands of uh, measurements done by me and practitioners that I've taught. Then I developed this first rib inclinometer and special caliper that measures many other things, but this allows me to put this caliper on an individual in the right points and it reads out the exact angle that their first rib is at. The angle of the first rib is very important because the nerves that feed the arm come out of the neck between the scalene muscles, run under the clavicle, through the armpit, and down into the arm. So if any exercise done repetitiously increases that angle, it causes strangulation of the artery, vein, ner and the nerves, and even the lymphatic vessels running through there, and leads to thoracic outlet syndrome problems. Some of you may have had the experience of putting your arms up to grab the bar while doing a squat or a lunge and your finger starts to go numb, usually the little finger and the ring finger. That's the kind of thing that happens if you do too many crunches and shorten the muscles in front of your body, as I'll point out in a second. This will also measure the expansion of the rib cage. It'll measure the pelvic tilt, which is a critical measurement for structural alignment. I kept very careful records using goniometric systems. I studied Norwegian medical exercise therapy with some of the top medical exercise therapists in the world. And we began taking very careful measurements of the curvatures of the spine so that that could be carefully monitored and I could see exactly what was happening with the application of any given stretching exercise or joint mobilization program or even diet and lifestyle programs, I found changing a person's diet can have significant influences on their structure, even without giving them an exercise program for reasons I explain in my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, and in my more advanced training. We also used, or I also studied goniometry in general and used the standard physical therapy measurement system and began to take very, very comprehensive measurements on every single person before and after each program and amassed a massive amount of data with which I could use to demonstrate the points I share now objectively. Thank you very much. Very helpful. And so here's some key things about the crunch that most people, even, even a lot of doctors and therapists today, still aren't aware of. You can see people using ab rollers and doing crunches in physical therapy clinics, osteopathic clinics and chiropractic clinics, gyms, spas, recreation centers all over the world to this very day and magazines are still full of every variation of the crunch you can imagine. What we need to be aware of first is that based on solid research in muscle physiology, if a muscle is contracted in a shortened range of motion, research by Goldspink and others shows that the muscle begins to drop sarcomeres. A sarcomere is the active contractile unit of a muscle. If you look at a muscle under a microscope, you see little lines called Z lines between which are actin and myosin filaments. So a sarcomere is an integration of two halves of the actin myosin filament complex, so that would be a Z line. A Z line that would be a contractile unit. If a muscle is exercised repeatedly in a shortened position, the research shows that very quickly, in as little as 24 hours, for example, the muscle begins to drop sarcomeres. If a muscle is exercised in a lengthened position, like you're stretching the muscle, like an athlete throwing a ball has to stretch their chest muscles, then if the muscle was previously short and that activity stretches it enough, it will excite the system to begin adding sarcomeres and the muscle gets longer. And you're all familiar with this probably don't even know it, but when a woman gets pregnant, the growth of the fetus starts stretching the entire abdominal wall. If the muscles in the abdominal wall of a pregnant woman did not start adding sarcomeres, by the time that baby was full term, at its weight, she, that baby would be under so much pressure, she even opened her legs, it might squirt right out of her. It'd be like a pressurized system in there. So the abdominal wall adds sarcomeres, so the muscles actually get longer, but when the baby is born and the stretch force is gone, the muscles immediately begin dropping sarcomeres, which is why you see that the period of about three months after a woman gives birth is a very dangerous period for women to be too frisky with exercise, especially if their diet 
isn't really good and they have inflammation in there because their joints are still not stable. The system's too loose. So when we look at the crunch exercise, when you're laying on the floor, you can't go behind the floor into spinal extension, which is really critical because the average person naturally extends as much as 35 to 70 degrees in spinal extension. So if you throw a tennis ball up, you've got to reach your spine back into extension because the abdominals are the prime movers of the trunk and they accelerate the trunk to support action of the arm. If you're swinging a golf club, you've got to go in extension. If you can't, you'll overuse your shoulders. So when people forget that the spine has to work in extension, that the abdominals are predominantly fast twitch and they react very quickly to throw things like spears, to defend ourselves, etc. then they start shortening and shortening the muscles and they're often doing high repetition exercises which favors the development of slow twitch muscle fibers, which don't hypertrophy as well. And what happens is the more you do that, the more you lose that fast twitch function. And the core has to have good fast twitch function because if you're out running on a trail or you need to turn quickly or you lose your balance, the core is the chief uh, muscle system for stabilizing your body in all planes of movement. So if you get too much repetitious short range motion, then what happens is the abdominals get to become slower and slower to react. They get more and more limited in their functionality because you're only doing one peedly little exercise that's functionally very, very simple for the nervous system, but just but simple. Walking to the toilet is a billion times more complicated than doing a crunch, for example. So what happens is you start seeing all sorts of dysfunction in the posture from repeatedly moving in these shortened positions. And of course, people tend to carry their heads and devices like the ab roller promote that they carry the head for you. But the hip flexors, the abdominal trunk flexors and the neck flexors, which go all the way into the tip of your tongue are a working system called the flexor chain. So if you keep crunching down and pulling your head forward, then it brings the head forward, which means the brain now we'll move the pelvis forward to match it or you will be extremely inefficient in the field of gravity. If you were like this all the time, your postural muscles would be exhausted in no time. So the body brings the pelvis forward to counterbalance the head, which disrupts pretty much every biomechanical relationship. If a person like that swings a golf club or goes to a swimming pool or plays golf, they're probably gonna ruin their shoulders and because when the trunks pull down like that, which is certainly not very favorable for women's aesthetics, and they seem to be the ch crunch champions, it's far better to do proper core conditioning than to go get a boob job because at 25 years of age, your nipples are looking at the ground and your head's down here like an old lady. But I see them going and getting the boob jobs and doing the same exercises that are making them aesthetically unpleasing all the time, which is unnecessary. So. What you have then is you lose the curves. You get a flat back, which promotes herniation of the lumbar discs. You get flexion in the thoracic spine or excessive kyphosis, which causes the rotational capacity of the spine to be significantly limited. The head goes forward in the field of gravity, causing significant increases in the contraction of the neck extensors, as I show you in scientific core conditioning. For each inch that your head goes forward, you double the force of recruitment in the neck muscles. So at two inches forward, you've got about four times the weight of your head hanging from your neck muscles, which leads to all sorts of tension, headaches, syndromes, and uh, chronic trigger points, and brain fog, and eyes that don't work, because those muscles will send pain into the eyes and create ocular dysfunction, and the list goes long and on and on and on and on, and costs people a truckload of money for reading too many magazines and go into fitness conferences where the education is being provided by people selling gimmicks, unfortunately. So what can we do then? First of all, we've got to remember that the normal spine in an upright position has three curves that should be 32 to 35 degrees. That's the working range of a normal body based on thousands and thousands of measurements. So the lumbar curve, the thoracic curve, and the cervical curve should all be approximately 32 to 35 degrees if a person has balanced posture like you just saw with Angie. 
if you lay over a Swiss ball, and I pioneered the use of Swiss balls in the exercise industry, in the gym industry, I produced the first Swiss ball exercise videos in the world on how to use weightlifting apparatus and how to use Swiss balls for conditioning athletes. Prior to that, it was all jumpy bumpy, and most of the balls in rehab clinics were collecting dust because most of the physical therapists, especially in the West, were completely clueless as to what to do with them. I had to study uh, European literature, mostly German literature, to really get a grasp on how to master these balls. And what I found very quickly was is that on a Swiss ball, you can go into extension and exercise the abdominals through a full functional range of motion so that when doing proper exercises and letting the spine go all the way into extension, not only did you stretch the entire flexor chain with every rep, you exercised it through a full range of motion, which is over twice what you can do on the floor. Over twice the working range of motion, then you have a nice long strength curve. You don't, if you use the right loading techniques, you don't lose your fast twitch muscle fiber, you remain explosive, and doing the exercise helps maintain normal range of motion in the thoracic spine, in the lumbar spine, and in the neck, all areas that people commonly have problems with from sitting too much. So at the end of the day, what you find is, in my program, Scientific Core Conditioning, I teach you many, many techniques for exercising correctly. I give you a very sound, therapeutic and logical rationale based on a lot of clinical research. You know, I've been doing this a hell of a long time. So I've worked with piles of elite athletes with all sorts of problems and every kind of problem you can imagine. And I use corrective exercise as an essential part of my overall therapeutic approach in my holistic approach. So through scientific core conditioning, you can really learn how to do exercises correctly. You can learn the rationale. You can learn how the muscles work. You can learn how to address common orthopedic pain problems and structural problems and postural problems and muscle imbalance syndromes, how to correct them. Its sister program is scientific back training, which gives you the same approach to the whole issue of the back which the abdominal issue is very, very intimate. In fact, you can be a back expert, and if you don't understand the science of the core, you'll never get great results. You can be a core expert, and you'll go a long way to helping people with the back, but there will be specific issues about the back that have to be studied, which is why I have those specific two courses. That's too much information to be digested at once. So you get a complete manual, a series of DVDs, very clear instructions, and I take you from all the way from very simple floor-based rehab exercises all the way up to ass kicker, high performance, multi-modality exercises like I use with people like Laird Hamilton, Danny Way, professional rugby players, all sorts of superstars have used these techniques very, very successfully. So there's your tips on how to get more from your core. There's key dangers to that crunch. If you're using crunch exercises at all, it has to be very carefully balanced with extension exercises and spinal range of motion exercises and mobilizations, or your attempts to actually get yourself fit and have a washboard could be the cause of temporomandibular joint problems, neck problems, shoulder problems, back problems, hip problems, pelvic girdle problems, and a long list of disorders that are not the kind of things we want from our exercise program. So there you go. Nice program for you. Some very simple advice. Women, learn how to keep those boobies in the right place so that you love what you see in the mirror. And I'm sure your husband would be, or boyfriend would be happy to buy you a Swiss ball and my course so you can look hot forever. And I'm excited about that too. Thanks for joining me today. Go to chekinstitute.com and Get the course that suits your needs and get started in making yourself healthy, fit, and beautiful today. See you soon.